the thing, what the message, what I'm going to share today with you, it just came something fresh, you know, in my mind, with experience that I had uh, just several days ago, and part of that experience I will share with you this morning. And uh, before I do anything, I just would like to ask you. How many of you remember when you fell in love? Is, the Rex, is Rex the only one? <laughs> ah. <laughs> so you remember when you fell in love? And I'll share a little bit this morning with you. So when I fell in love, with this lady, I couldn't separate myself from this picture because I didn't have the privilege all the time to be with, with Maria. And I was so in love, I couldn't stop myself from sharing that I fell in love. And I remember experience walking around with this picture and visiting my friends. And then I would say to them, hey, I got a girlfriend. You want to see? Oh, yeah, show me, you know? And then I would show, and then it was, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> and some of them, they would be so excited, you know? But some of them, they would be, oh, yeah, okay, congratulations. And I was thinking, why not everyone is so excited as I was? And the answer for that is because I fell in love, not them. So I brought this illustration to you this morning and I share my story just because I would like to ask you another question. How many of you remember the time when you fell in love with Jesus. Or by the way, is that your part of your experience? I do remember that time as well. I remember time when I met Jesus and when I couldn't stop talking about him. Anyone understand what I'm talking about? Is that part of somebody else's experience? I remember literally, I couldn't wait to see someone in order to share that I have another friend, which is Jesus. And obviously, in my attempt to, to, to share Jesus, I made a lot of mistakes. And I think that the other week I shared a little bit from my experience. But I was in my first love with my Savior, with Jesus. And that's something what is amazing. That's something what those who passed through this experience, they will never forget. Just several days ago, I had opportunity to talk to a person who is in love with Jesus. That person, I baptized that person just maybe several months ago. And the person is coming to church, but just a few days ago, the person, and I don't want to reveal the name, because I'm going to read the email that was sent to me and I'll try to be careful not to read everything, but something that really made me think. And I had to go to talk to that person and to share my opinion. Hi, Pastor Dragan. Hope you and Maria are well. I've been in a bit of dilemma lately, and I'm hoping you can help. I've got this very strong feeling 
I'm not doing enough for Christ in my life. It feels like I need to be getting out and witnessing or spreading the word of God, but not sure how or what I'm supposed to do. I mean, I love coming to church on Sabbath morning. And in my spare time, I'm always reading my Bible and watching sermons on um, Amazing Discovery TV, Hope Channel, or 3ABN. And then she said, I skip some things. I'm feeling, I'm getting the benefit and others need to hear the word too. Hope you have some ideas that you can help me. What would be your response if you receive such email? Firstly, I was so encouraged when I read this email, which comes from a person who is in first love for Jesus. How we can help. And obviously I made my appointment, I went to see the person, we spoke. And before I went there, I was studying the Bible and there was something what I would like to share with you, what I shared with the person. First thing, in the one of my favorite book, which is called The Desire of Ages. On page 195, there is a following quote. Every true disciple is born into the kingdom of God as a missionary. Have you heard for that quote before? Every true disciples is a born into the kingdom of God as a missionary. If you wanted to ask yourself a question, am I really true Christian? I would suggest to think the answer is depends how much I'm willing to share Christ with others. The Bible tells us that we are actually Christ ambassadors of this on this earth. I would like to ask you to, to open your Bible and to go with me to book 2 Corinthians. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And I would like to read first 20. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 20 says, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God was making his appeal through us. He implore you in Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So what the Bible says, what is our role on this earth? We are Christ ambassadors on this earth. And we live in beautiful country of Australia. But this is not our permanent home. You are, you are aware of that? We are God's ambassadors and we live in foreign country. Not just myself who came recently to this country, but each one of you who are born here, we all live in foreign country. Ambassadors, they live in foreign country. But in foreign country, what ambassadors do actually? They represent their own country. My question is, do we represent Christ on this earth? And I would like each one of us to answer for him or for herself. What else ambassadors do? Ambassadors promoting the values of their own country into the country they live temporarily. 
we as Christians are called to promote the values of Christianity wherever we go or whatever we do. We just spoke in the Sabbath school and, and someone said, this country is not Christian anymore. It used to be Christian. Australia used to be a Christian country, but it's not anymore. What we Christian do in order to make Australia to be Christian country again? If we are ambassadors of Christ, we will share Christ with people who live around us. Ambassadors are sometimes not popular in the country they live, especially if the rel relationship with the countries, two countries, are not so good. And that's the reason that sometimes ambassadors are not popular. And same with us as Christians. We are sometimes not popular, if I can use that word. People are not interested for Christian message because they are not interested for God. And we need to learn how to live with that. But we still need to be ambassadors of Christ. So I went the other day. I visited that person who is in first love for Christ. And I shared following. The person asked me how to be Christ's ambassador. What to do for him. How to witness. And I suggested several things. What I would like to suggest to each one of us today. First thing, allow Jesus to change your own life. There is difference knowing about him and knowing him. Would you agree with that? There is a difference knowing about God and knowing God. We can give only what we have and we can have only if we received the question obviously that person she uh, i just said she okay she she has love for god in her heart do we have love for god in our hearts then i suggested because I learn that there is a lot of friends and family members who are not Christians. And I suggested, let people see what Jesus has done for you personally. And my question was, do they see the difference? What is the difference all about? And I would like to ask for things today. Does people see difference between us who claim to be Christians and those who are not? I know that we often would like to bring some external difference. I know when I ask with some Christian and ask this question, so what is the difference? And they would bring this to me. Oh, I don't smoke anymore, I don't drink anymore, I don't do this, but it's, is it really all about smoking and drinking? And by the way, I, I know some Christians who still struggle with these things. Is that all what, we, what they're supposed to see? I believe there is much deeper things that those who don't know Christ, they need to see in Christian's life. Not just physical difference, but also difference in personality that God made new person. And I suggested as well, treat people as you would like to be treated. When it comes to difference, are people able to see difference in us since we became Christians? Are we still angry and grumpy and easily lose the plot? 
if they see these things, obviously there is no much change and there is no much difference between us and them. And then when I spoke with that person, she said, I would like to go somewhere to work for Christ. But I suggested this. I said, that's great. But if you would like to work for Christ, there is a special field that God has for you and for me as well. And the question was, what, what, was, what is that? And I said, that field is people that you first living with. That people that you are surrounded with. And I read a few stories from the Bible that I would like to share with you this morning. First story is about a man who was demon-possessed. You remember Jesus came there. And when Jesus saw that man, how many uh, demons were in him? You remember that story from Mark chapter 5? It said legion. And then Jesus cast out demons from that man. But after that, the man had special requirement. What he was asking Jesus for? He asked Jesus to go with him. But what Jesus said to him, let's go to Mark chapter 5, verses 18 to 20. Mark chapter 5, verses 18 to 20. Mark chapter 5, 18 to 20. The Bible says, as Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus didn't let him, but said, go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed. So what was Jesus' suggestion from this story? What is the, our first mission field? Where are we supposed to share Jesus? Who are the people that we supposed Jesus with? That we supposed to share Jesus with? Who are the people? Our own family. Our nucleus and extended family. Our relatives, our friends who live around us. But they can receive the message only if they see what the Lord has done for us. If they can't see the difference, they won't be interested to learn anything about Jesus. Most of them. The other sto the other, another story, what I would like to remind us, about how to be Christian uh, Christ ambassadors and how to witness with him is the, from the story of Samaritan woman from John chapter 4. In John chapter 4, we read, about, uh, read a story about a woman who had a history, not so good history. She would come to take water from, water from the well at the midday, when she was sure that nobody was around. But one day, she met Jesus. Jesus revealed that he knows everything about her life. God knows everything about us. And after she met Jesus, that woman became different. But what she, did she do? The Bible tells us, in John chapter 4, verses 28 and 29. John chapter 4, verses 28 and 29. Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town 
and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? And then they came out of the town and made their way toward him. So we see in the story that this woman, her, her life was touched when she met Jesus. What did she do? She went back to the people that she knew. She shared her story. And what's happened? They come to see Jesus. Do we have a story to share with people? What Jesus has done in our life? If we don't, I believe that's the reason that we need to kneel down and ask God to give us story, to give us something that we can share. Tell your story. Tell what Jesus has done for you. And the last story, what I would like to share from the Bible, is in John chapter 9. A story about a man who was blind, but he was actually born blind. And he, when he met Jesus, he got his sight. For the first time in his life, he was able to see. What did he do? He was still in his community. The people notice difference. And they start asking him questions. And that's how he was able to witness for God. John chapter 9, verses 8 to 11. John chapter 9, verses 8 to 11. His neighbors... You see who first? His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, isn't it the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, no, he only looks like him. But he himself insists, I am the man. So who was his mission field? The people that, to, that knew him. They know that he used to be a different man. But they had opportunity now to see what Jesus had done in his life. My brothers and sisters, the question that I would like each one of us to think this morning is... Am I different now as Christian than I used to be before I met Jesus? If I'm different, that means that I'm ambassador for Christ. And I would like, before I finish, to share two quotes with you from the Testimonies for the Church, Book 7. Seventh-day Adventists have been chosen by God as a peculiar people, separate from the world. He has made them his representatives and has called them to be ambassadors for him in the last work of salvation. The greatest wealth of truth ever entrusted to mortals. The most solemn and fearful warning ever sent by God to men have been committed to them to be given to the world. And last quote says, Christ's work in behalf of men is not finished. It continues today. In like manner, his ambassadors are to preach the gospel and to reveal his pitying love for lost and perishing souls. Did Christ touch your life? If he did, 
he will be able to touch life of others through you. If he didn't yet, don't give up. Ask God to have personal experience with him, to change you, to become a new person. May God help us as we're trying to be his ambassadors in this world. Amen.